So today I have probably the most exciting reveal I've done yet on this channel. It's from Fashion File and it's about 10 years old. Any guesses on what it is? Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new around here, my name is Caleb and on this channel you're going to find a lot of things like luxury shopping, unboxings and reveals, daily vlogs, travel vlogs, you name it. So if this is something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click the bell icon so that way you're notified whenever I post new content. Now earlier I told you today is one of my most exciting reveals and it's kind of a big deal. So back when I was in college, I was on a much stricter budget than I am now and I absolutely loved Burberry. I had the polo that classic Burberry polo in the bright colors with the uh, Haymarket check on the, the lapel. Oh my god, I wore those to death. I still have them all. They're, they're in storage because they're not really my style anymore. But um, to say I was obsessed with Burberry is an, a huge understatement. I had the umbrellas from the, I think, 2008 and 2009 April Showers collections. I had the jewelry, the wallets. I had everything but a bag. I loved Burberry. Everything Christopher Bailey did for Burberry was superb. And 2012, spring and summer and autumn winter were by far his best collections, especially autumn winter. Back then, let me think. So Downton Abbey was huge and he did this whole collection with an idea of town meets country. He mixed fabrics and they did a whole lot of things with the lost wax method and, and we'll get into that here a little bit more in a moment. And I absolutely loved the bags, especially the ones with like the foxes and the owls and the, the hunting dogs and ducks on them. Amazing. Um, of course, in 2012, like I said, I was in college. So the idea of spending nearly $2,000 on a bag wasn't something I thought that I would be able to achieve at the time. And I recently was on Fashion File and they had not one but two bags from that collection. And I, of course, had to buy one. <laughs> I told Zane after I the the, Bur the Balenciaga that I, I showed off last week, I said, okay, I'm done. I'm going to carry each of my bags for a full week before I buy a new one, which would have taken me about four months, I think, at this point. And I made it like maybe three days. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you the bag, and then we're going to take a closer look at that collection and dive a little bit further into that, that 2012 Christopher Bailey era. Now, once Christopher Bailey left Burberry, sadly I fell off. Um, this is the first Burberry item I've purchased at least four years, maybe four or five years. It's, it's been a minute. Um, okay, I've talked enough. Let's get into it. So obviously it's autumn winter. It's one of the smaller clutches. Do you know which one it is? Um, I'm just gonna get into it. All right, let's get this out. I'll be honest, obviously I've already opened the box and looked at it. This came in the mail, I think this was delivered Friday. <clears throat> No, Thursday. I think I ordered it on Sunday, sent it out in two days, and I, I got it on Thursday. Anyway, you're never going to believe this. So the one that I got was the quilted fox clutch in the black. <laughs> this bag is stunning, and it weighs a ton, rightfully so. I mean, it has a massive gold fox on the front. So this was from that autumn winter collection. This was in fact um, Elena Bartels uh, modeled this. I think it was look 43. I'm going to insert a photo over here so that way you can see the look. Sadly they didn't capture the bag very well but if you watch the video which is still up on YouTube you can clearly see that she has the black fox clutch. Now this is made of lambskin and it's quilted. Like I said the fox head, um, all the heads that year were made from the lost wax method. We learned about that in my art history classes in college and essentially this is about a 6,000 year old process. They've been doing it for quite a long time and the amount of detail they were able to achieve doing that is mind-blowing. And of course it has the Burberry Porsum buttons here on the front and these huge zipper pulls. So I read online um, that the big zipper pulls that year were inspired by pieces from the Burberry archive and the big orchard bag which we're going to take a look at here in a minute was also inspired by older uh, Burberry luggage pieces which I wouldn't mind having one. And this bag is absolutely gorgeous. It's lined in Nubuck or trimmed in Nubuck, I should say, and it has these massive gold details. I mean, this thing weighs a ton. It is by far my heaviest bag. And at nearly $2,000 uh, original retail, probably the most expensive one in my collection. So the bag opens up to a main compartment, um, but 
overall, it's it's a pretty roomy bag. I'm going to show you here in a little bit what all you can fit in there. But on the inside, there's just one large compartment. It's lined in the Burberry Porsome logoed fabric. And there is a little slip pocket here. I'm sure at the time, phones back then would have fit in there. Uh, it's kind of an awkward size now, so I'm not really sure what I'll put in there. And then this front pocket, it's it's not really the most convenient to get in and out of, of course, because of the fox, but it pops open and then you pull it up. Again, you have the beautiful new buck fabric underneath, and then you do have access to this pocket under here. Again, not really convenient. I might put my headphones in there or something like that. Probably not a bag I'm going to carry a whole lot just because it is lambskin and it's an important piece. It, it was a runway bag. Speaking of runway, so today what I'm wearing, this Gucci cardigan was from from the 2018 cruise collection I think it was shown on the runway in pink I'll insert a photo over here and then the shirt I have on is from the now defunct line Armani Collectioni I think it was one of their like mid-priced collections Armani I love Armani clothing and I have a lot of his runway pieces as well I think he just really cuts men's clothing perfectly so that's what I'm wearing today but this bag is amazing <sighs> I can't get over it. Obviously I'm cutting this off. This bag is perfection. There is a little bit of issue here. The plating has chipped off on this button here, but I think when you're carrying it, I mean, who's gonna really see it? And then this zipper here, I can't tell if this is just ornamental. I, I can't get mine to unzip. So if anyone actually has this bag, let me know if that actually opens because I'd be interested to see how big that pocket can get. Again, I'm probably not gonna use it just because it is such a pain to get in and out of, but who knows? Be fun to see. Now this bag also came in olive and original retail was 1,995 USD. They also made larger ones that were I think 3,000, give or take, that were just covered in studs and had either the fox, the duck, or the hunting dog, I believe. And then they had smaller pieces. Meghan Markle actually had one of the smaller ones, but let, let's get into it. So I've got my computer here and we're gonna take a look at the 2012 Burberry website. Okay, so Burberry under Christopher Bailey was perfection. He knew what the brand should look like, how it should be perceived. All right, so here we are on Burberry's website. This is how it looked back in 2012. This is just such a neat way to see what was being shown on the runways that year, what prices were for different items. It's it's a fun fun way to look back. So here we have, this is the Burberry Porsum page. So this is when they debuted that beautiful orchard bag. This one was originally shown with uh, crocodile trim. You had the country animals on the front and other embellishings. I think later on, as the orchard bag lasted through a few seasons, it got a little bit more plain, um, not quite as embellished. But if I could find one of these originals, in good condition at a good price, I would buy it up in a heartbeat. So the orchard bag was originally inspired by luggage from the Burberry archives, and you can definitely see that in its size. It's absolutely massive for daily use, um, makes quite a statement. Now the men's collection that year, oh, that was amazing. So they had beautiful jewel-toned velvets, silks, wools. Um, the layering was amazing. They, they really nailed it with their collection there. I think they even had like pieced suede, um, kind of cubist, portfolio bags and, and luggage and perfection. Absolutely gorgeous. Now the women's collection, this one here, not quite as good. Um, I think I with this runway, I preferred more of the town looks than the country looks. With the country looks, a lot of them were shown with this kind of uh, owl motif t-shirt, which hasn't really aged well. I think overall the rest of the outfit looks great, but that owl definitely looks very 2012, um, almost childish in a way. Speaking of children, uh, the Kids' children's wear was really great that year as well. And overall, just the perfect collection. They did such a great job with those pieces. Now let's take a closer look at the bags from that collection. So here we have the orchard bag and all of its different iterations for that season. You have the larger quilted versions. Um, these are similar to my clutch. You'll have the lamb skin and, and whatnot. Those started out at $29.95 for the large or $26.95 for the smaller version. Then you had the more plain versions with just the country animals on the front. Again, retail is a little high, $24.95 and $21.95 for the smaller sizes. And then you had the plain striped versions as well, which I think are really unique. This frame tote, I don't really remember seeing on the runway. It's still a unique piece though. Yeah, the barrel bags though definitely did make the runway. These have the country animals on the ends and they're done in the beautiful um, textural nubuck leather. And then here we have the clutch pieces. So these three are the smaller versions. These start out at $14.95. Meghan Markle, in fact, carried the green with the fox, the olive with the fox there. Here's the one that I have. Mine is the quilted Napa clutch bag. 
retail for that was $19.95. The smaller ones were $14.95. Mine came in two colors, olive and black, which we'll look a little bit closer here at the olive in a moment. The piece de resistance of this collection were the studded clutch bags. These were amazing, but priced at $13.95 as a college student, that was definitely out of my uh, price realm, unfortunately, at the time. But again, like the orchard bags, if I could find those in good shape, I would definitely add the fox for sure. Maybe even the duck. I think the duck is kind of unique. But let's take a closer look at mine. So here we have... This is the olive version. So the website I'm using didn't capture the, the black, otherwise I'd show you mine a little bit up closer in detail. But the olive version, it's made of equestrian quilted Napa leather with polished metal fox head. I think it's really unique that Burberry used the lost wax casting method for this. Um, this was a technique that I learned about in my art history classes back in college. So with the lost wax method, this is a way that you can make high high definition, if you will, reliefs of um, metal castings. And um, you can also use it for mass production, which on a scale of Burberry size is, is amazing that they were, um, that A, that they did that, and, and B, I think it's neat that they, they talked about it there in the description. So the oversized hardware, these poles were also inspired by vintage luggage from the Burberry archives. They're absolutely stunning. They, they really definitely make a statement, and I love that they finished it with a Nubuck tab at the end as well. They, let's see, Burberry Porsum Grow Grain Lining, Features and Care. So of course this bag was made in Italy. I think a lot of the Burberry Porsum pieces then were 100% lambskin, size-wise. So it's 11 inches in length, 5 and a half inches tall, 1 inch thick. Again, a clutch of this size it really doesn't hold a whole lot, but we'll, we'll take a closer look at that here in a moment. So the olive version was shown more in the country version, whereas my black one was shown during the town part of the collection. I think mine was look 43, which was modeled by Elena Bartles at the time. And look at that detail. That is so gorgeous. So I wanted to bring your attention to the owl one as well. So this one's done in an indigo green nubuck leather. Again, pretty much the same kind of details as mine. However, they did it in a brushed nubuck leather rather than the quilted Napa lambskin. This one, same sizing, it's just missing the large pocket on the front. But this one has the owl on the front. Meghan Markle had this version in the, I think she had the green with the fox. Again, I think these came in all the different jewel tones with each country animal on the front. Unlike mine, though, it doesn't have the Nubuck tab at the end, which is probably fine since there's already so much Nubuck on the bag itself. As you can tell, this one was modeled during the town portion of the collection. Look at these jewel tones. That is ah, gorgeous. Anyway, so if this is a piece that catches your interest, I will share with you that it is currently on fashion file. So this piece is in amazing condition. Honestly, if one of you don't beat me to it, I'll probably add this to my collection here in about a month or so. So currently they have it priced, it was originally priced on fashion file at $425, but right now they have it at 20% off, currently priced at only $340, which is a fantastic deal for a bag that was originally $1,495 just nine years ago. They have the estimated retail here wrong, but whatever, it is what it is. But overall, it's in fantastic condition. You have the grained Nubuck leather and the indigo green, the beautiful gold Burberry porcelain owl there on the front, and the large zipper pull. Overall, it's in fantastic condition. So I think that if this isn't if this isn't purchased here soon, I'm, I'm probably going to get it when it goes to the next percentage off, just because once I start collecting something, I have to have it all. <laughs> so sorry, Balenciaga, I will be cheating on you with Burberry for a minute. So anyway, so that is a look at Burberry in 2012, and let's go ahead and take a look and see what uh, fits in the bag. All right, so now that we've taken a closer look at the 2012 Burberry Autumn Winter Runway Collection pieces, let me go grab some things from my closet and we'll see what fits inside the clutch. Stay tuned. All right, so first things first, Obviously, we need to cut the tag off. So if you've shopped with Fashion File before, then you know, once you cut the tag, the bag is yours. And since I've been looking for this bag for almost a decade, it's now mine. <laughs> All right, so authenticity card. So 
So I don't know if anyone else does this, but I actually have a binder full of all of the paperwork, receipts, and information on all of my designer pieces and in runway clothing. Totally my type A personality coming through, but I actually have a page for each item in that book, and it's about a six inch thick binder, I think. Uh, maybe not six inches, but it's pretty intense. Anyway, so that's gonna go into there, and let's see what all fits inside this bag. So I carry, I brought in everything that I carry on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, for size reference, I have the six plus iPhone. Again, this is the same size as the pro sized phones that I use now. So we'll see how that fits. Can't go anywhere without my Shiseido blotting papers, especially now that it's summer, I get a little bit shiny. And just for reference, I brought both a Gucci Ophidia card holder, just to see how that fits, and a full-size Louis Vuitton Brazza wallet. And of course, my Prada six key holder and my chunky BMW key. So let's get this bad boy opened up and see what all fits inside. All right, so surprisingly not a whole lot of room in there for how big and how heavy this bag is. So this obviously isn't going to be something I'm gonna be carrying to work every day, probably for like maybe the day or two just to show it off. So we've got our wallet in there and our phone, thinking that this could probably fit in that weird little cell phone pocket. Yeah, just about. And can we get keys and a full wallet in there? Not really. Not gonna lie. So keys would either either have to go in my pocket or I'd have to be driven that day. Only way around it. So let's swap out the big wallet for a card holder and see if that opens up some space. It's like playing Tetris. <laughs> All right, so, oh my gosh, yeah. So with this bag, obviously I think I'll be using a card holder, but as you can see, it's all in there. Maybe, there you go. And zip this up. I wasn't kidding when I said this is probably my heaviest bag that I own, I mean. Honestly. So now that I have everything in there, let's take a closer look at the interior and a couple of close-up shots. So here we have it up close. Look at that craftsmanship and attention to detail. So here is that famous fox head and the big Burberry porsome buttons. Now here on top we have the Burberry plaque on top of the fox's head and the quilted lambskin leather and nubuck trim. Here's the back side. The quilting is still nice and puffy, which is great. Again, I don't think this one was used very often, if at all. And then here are the large, chunky zipper pulls with the new buck tabs at the bottom. So up front here, we have the front pocket, which could be pretty roomy. Again, I don't know if this zipper is supposed to open. Mine doesn't, so I'm not going to try and force it and break the bag. I'm sure Burberry doesn't repair or look at their older pieces, especially considering this one's what? nine years old at this point. So let's take a look at the inside. So the zipper glides nice and smoothly. In the interior, not terribly roomy. You have the Burberry Porsum logo back here and that kind of slip pocket I was telling you about. And of course, this was made in Italy. The sad thing with Burberry now, I was at recently at the outlet and I saw one of the full price runway pieces. Well, might not have been runway, but it had been marked mm, I forget where it was made, but at that price point, I would have expected something much better, which was a little disappointing to see. But that is the close-up of the Burberry Porsum Fox Clutch. All right, guys, so that is my new Burberry Porsum Fox Clutch in the black lambskin leather. Stunning absolutely stunning piece. This is probably now my favorite piece in my collection and I need it in the olive. I obviously need to go and buy the owl one while it's still available and I think I need all of them in all the colors. So I'm sorry Balenciaga but I'm going to be having a little affair with some old Burberry for a moment and yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you don't already follow me over on Instagram, go ahead and check me out, caleb.snell.designer. Again, links down below. I'm also on TikTok by the same name. Also, some exciting news. Starting this week, I'm going to be posting twice a week. So no more videos just on Sundays. I'm also going to be posting videos on Wednesdays as well. So with the new format, I plan to post on Wednesdays things like bag reveals, luxury fashion, shopping, all that kind of stuff. And then on Sundays are going to be more of vlog style posts or maybe specific videos. Uh, I haven't really decided what that format's going to look like, but I know this coming week on Wednesday I'll be reviewing my Louis Vuitton Palace bag a little bit more in depth than what I showed in my bag collection video. And then on Sunday I am actually filming right now a just a lazy weekend vlog, so that's going to go up on Sunday. As you can see, I finally got my hair cut. You'll get to see that in the new video. That was fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, stick around. I'm really enjoying my time here on YouTube, and I hope that you're all enjoying the journey 
journey with me. And I look forward to getting to know all of you more and growing together. All right, guys, we'll have a fantastic week and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.